Imam Abu Hanifa, he used to debate people at the age of 10 years. What? 10 years! Some of us old, hardback men can't even talk about the Quran at the age of 50 and 60 and 70 years. Sorry, I hope you don't get angry at me. And we try, some of us try to debate and talk Islam. Sometimes I listen to my brothers who pray Salah here, talk so much stupidity sometimes, their own opinion, their own verses, their own interpretation, criticizing Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbal, criticizing the laws of Islam, and in my opinion, I think this is that, and in my opinion, in my country, what garbage do we talk? Could we want to compare to men like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbal? Imam Abu Hanifa, I told Imam Bukhari at the age of 11 was questioning people and teachers who were teaching hadith. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah alayhi, at the age of 10 years, he challenged an atheist, or you call a kafir, or someone who did not believe in God. Actually, this atheist was challenging all the Muslims. Oh, you guys believe in God? Who is your God? What is your God? Where is your God? What is your God doing? And he was making a fool of all the Muslims. This little boy, whose name was Noman bin Thabit, he said, I will challenge him. The man was, the, man, the atheist said, come on, Muslims. You don't have anything better than this? This little thing? Ten years to so come challenge me? Well, what's going on with you people? Ten years. Go check his history. He challenged the man. The man asked him. He asked the question. What or who comes before your God? Who's your God? He asked him three questions. Who is your God? What, what comes before him? Tell me something about before him. You're telling me all about what he created. What about before him? You ask him, what direction is your God facing? And then he asks him, what is your God doing now? You brothers who sleep in the Juma, you think you have an answer for that? <laughs> and you're not sleeping, huh? You might be sleeping. Allah is not sleeping. Hey, just take a little record of what we do. So Imam, this little boy, Noman bin Thabit, who is called Imam Abu Hanifa, he said to the man, he said, I want you to count from 10 backwards. So the atheist said, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He said, what after that? He said, nothing. So what after? Th what? He said, zero, nothing. He said, but before Allah was nothing. Allah is there. Allah is now, Allah is then, and nobody could tell who and what is before Allah. You tell me what is before one, and I will try to explain after that. The man shut up. He was so witty. The man said, okay, tell me what direction your God is facing now. What direction your God is facing? So the little 10-year-old boy, Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi, he asked the people for a candle. They brought the candle, he lighted the candle, and he put it there. And he showed the man. He said, you tell me what direction is this light facing? The man said, all direction. He said, very simple. You answered it yourself. Allah is all directions. You can't explain a candle in all direction, the light of the candle in all direction. And you want to question my God and Allah whose knowledge and wisdom and light is in all directions? The man humbled the atheist. Then the atheist boldly said, now tell me what your God is doing. So, <laughs> the atheist was on a little height. I wouldn't say a member, but like a little height. You know, in the little countryside, they got little humps and little small little hills. He stood up on this hill and trying to embarrass all these Muslims. And this little boy is answering him. So he said, tell me what is your God doing? That God you worship, what is he doing? See, the little 10-year-old boy, Imam Abu Hanifa, he said, all right, you come down the hill and let me go up so I could explain to you and demonstrate properly what the, my God is doing. So the man came down. So when he went up on the little hill, the man said, Now tell me, what is your God doing? <laughs> little 10-year-old boy, look at him. He said, my imam has just 
taken a disbeliever and put him down and put the Muslim on top. You have now been degraded. That's what my God just did to you. See the wisdom? Ten years. And today we have people arguing and trying to criticize them. Some of us today don't even know how he got the name Abu Hanifa. Do you guys know how he got the name Abu Hanifa? Hanifa is the name of a girl. And here Imam Abu Hanifa, the, the, the practice in those days, they used to carry the name of their son. Right? Abu Anwar, Abu Qasim. They used to use the names of sons and be father of that son. But Hanifa is the name of a girl. I'm saying some of us criticize these greater Imam. Do you know Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah? He was born 70 years after the Prophet Sallallahu passed away. He met Sahabas. He communicated with Sahabas. He's a Tabi'een. He talked to Sahabas. He got knowledge and guidance direct from Sahabas. And we have people here become their own muftis and sheikhs and passing fatwas and qurbani and Eid, and we have no clue where we got it from. That's why I need to emphasize on this aspect of the Sharia and Islam. Allah, inshallah, to myself first. Once there was, someone came to him and asked him a question. His name was what? Noman bin Thabit. Someone came to him and asked him a question, and I know a lot of you men might like this question. The ladies mightn't like it too much. But this is interesting how he got his name. They came and asked him a question. They said, Imam Noman bin Thabit, okay, he was known by that name. Why are men alone allowed to have more than one wife? And women are not allowed to have more than one husband. So the, the, his daughter was Hanifa, little girl. She said, Dad, 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 could I answer the question? Abu, could I answer the question? So the father said, yes. She said, but I have a condition for you. He said, what is the condition? She said, if I answer this question right, would you take my name and break that history of having a boy's name and call yourself Abu Hanifa after today? And he said, no, yes. So she said, all right. She told the ladies and the people around. She told them to come. Brought a few ladies, got a big jar of milk, gave a couple ladies some cups, and told them all to dip out a, jar, a cup of milk. So all these ladies dipped a cup of milk. Then she told them, pour the milk back in the jar. So they all poured the milk back in the jar. Following? Then she told them, take out your portion of milk that you put in. Well, they shocked. How could they do that? She said, take out your portion of milk that you have put in. They say, but we can't do that. She said, you can't even separate your portion of milk you put in this little pot. And you want a woman to have four husbands and decide who is the husband of that child? With all these different things that go inside of her? Today you have DNA tests. But they didn't have DNA tests in those days. Get that? So don't come tell me DNA today. A woman got four husbands. How would you know who is the father of the child? You can't separate. And do you know in Hadith, if a woman is pregnant, the Sharia is she could, she's not supposed to get married during pregnancy unless she's marrying to the same man that she got pregnant for. Learn a little thick here. And if she gets married during pregnancy, she's not supposed to have any relationship with the new husband she lived with until after the whole nine yards of childbirth and the whole thing. See, that's why we need to learn fiqh. Because the Prophet wasallam says, no man should water the seed of another man. So you're not going to marry, that's the hadith. If you don't like it, you can take it out from the Bukhari. Because some of us, you know, we don't like our own verses and our own hadith. That's why he said, you don't do that because it creates fitna and corruption. Already we got a lot of corruption in the biological. Sometimes you have people call their own father who is their biological father, you're not my father. Could you imagine they have doubts of who is the father? Children today deny their own biological father who bring them up and say, you're not my father. What about a woman got four husbands? You got corruption, murder. But she answered that question as a young girl. And that's how him from no man bin Thabit took the name of Abu Hanifa, father of Hanifa. So